I was just like stunned, you know. I mean, you talk about not being able to say anything and just like, and he had the biggest smile on his face and, you know, welcomed us and uh, talked for a few minutes. And that was how I got to meet Brooks Robinson. And since then, here and there, and over time, we've run into each other. And the most gracious man I think I've ever met in my life. Just a, just a prince of a person. So, uh, rest in peace, Brooks Robinson. As far as injuries, we get ahead of that. We really don't have any updates on that to add. Uh, no announcements, uh, no comments on it. It just isn't really something that we have really too much to say that I can really help you with anyway. And anything that I would say uh, might not be accurate or it might not uh, be something I want to put out there. So that's where we're at with that. Okay? What question, Jeff? So you wouldn't classify as positive getting guys back from injury? <laughs> <laughs> there, you know, there's four guys back out there that, that well, Gus did 15, but then three guys have been out. I mean, that has to be a That's positive. That's positive. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, of course. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, we're, right. we're happy with the guys. As they get back, we're going to be... We're going to be thrilled. I mean, I mean, these these guys are really good players. You know, these guys are these guys, and they've been working really hard to get back. They want to be back, and as guys come back, we're going to be very excited for them to get back and play. And, and uh, you know, some of that will happen this week, and then going forward the next few weeks. John, can you say that uh, Gus is still in the concussion protocol? I don't have a definition on that. No, I don't. I don't. He wouldn't have been on practice today if he was actually in the concussion protocol. So, the fact that we haven't talked about that, I would say no. But uh, just. Bear with me in the fact that I've had that specific conversation with the doctors. John, to sign Kyle Annoy. I know he was here this summer as well briefly, but what what, what do you like about him? Yeah, always uh, you know always have liked Kyle Van Noy as a player. You go back to the Patriot Ravens games and uh, him being out there playing the way he plays in that in that style in that manner. Uh, he's just a ferocious player, you know, and smart player, tough player. I know he's in shape and he's ready to go. And, and uh, if needed, he'll be out there helping us. John, when you watch that Cleveland defense on, on tape from the first three games this year, they've obviously always had a lot of talent, but it seems like they're even more formidable this year, maybe. I mean, do you see a particular area where they've taken even another step up this year? I think the defense for Cleveland is playing great. I mean, they're the number one ranked defense in the league. They're giving up 164 yards, 10.3 10 points a game, is it? I mean, that's about as good as you can get. So uh, that's something that we've got to take into account. Uh, we've studied them. We know the players. We, we understand the scheme as best we can from being outside and uh, as an opponent. We're just going to have to go out there and play our best football and move the ball, score points, and try to win the game. Are they doing something very different stylistically with Schwartz, or is it? You know, are they doing some other things? Like well, uh, Coach Schwartz has his system. It's uh, kind of Greg Williams' system. They've been in that system before. Yeah. Greg Williams, obviously. But, uh, uh, you know, Jim does it how he does it. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a decorated veteran defensive coordinator in this league. Does a great job. Always has. He's put his stamp on it for sure. John, it looks, it looks like their run defense, you know, on early downs, not afraid to set those edge rushers up at the wide nine and still be able to fit the run really well. I guess just what sticks out to you about how they're able to do everything despite maybe more aggressive posture? Well, that posture is also built to stop the run. It's not just a posture that's not built to stop the run. They have a way of playing the run, and that's how they do it. And, you know, we played that way in Philadelphia with Jim Johnson over the years, and that's a, it's a defense type of style that's been around for quite a long time. They're very good at, and they got, as you said, they got excellent players, and they're playing really hard and well, and, and we respect them. John, how, how difficult has it been to, I mean, you've gone against Miles Garrett many, many times, but the challenge of going against him and trying to contain him? Yeah, I mean, it hasn't changed. You know, it's the same challenge, and, uh, and he's, he's the same player. There's certainly no drop-off in his game, and uh, he's, he's a guy that you got to account for every single time. Don't want think of Ravens right as of recent. It's been Ravens, Bengals, Steelers, uh, people seem to not pay attention to how significant these games against the Browns can be in terms of that rivalry and division kind of this one too. Just speak to the spirit of these games and what they feel like. Uh, yeah, this this these games, I mean the Browns Ravens rivalry has, has, has been in my mind it's just been a very heated, tough, physical, hard fought rival. And uh, just go back and watch the games. I think that's all you gotta do. And I know our fans fans know that. You know, I probably don't agree with your premise that they don't understand that. I, I, I believe our fans do know that, and that's a tough, it's a tough stadium to play. Play in, it's very loud. Uh, they pipe music in on the sideline right behind you, it makes it even tougher for you. And uh, it's just the way it is. It's a tough place to play. And it's, a, it's a tough team, and, and we respect them very much. John, yeah, with all the changes you made at any point, how does that affect your game? Or does it affect your game? 
Well, I mean, I think offensively, you always try to, and Todd does a great job with the coaches and <clears throat> scheming towards guys' strengths, Mike, you know, and try to do the things that they do well, put them in position to do things well. And, uh, but it's all within the structure of the offense. The offense is built to what you do well against what they do well, what we don't do well, and their scheme, and that's the way they work. And the way he comes to practice with such spirit, how have you seen him bounce back since the loss and maybe some of the mistakes, and how has he also maybe made some adjustments? Yeah, I mean, I think Zay just is a, he's, he's a very competitive guy. He's always in high spirits. He's always full of energy, and, uh, and he, he, had, he had a great couple of days. He and I talked yesterday, uh, actually Monday, for quite a while, and uh, just one-on-one. -on -one. It was a great conversation, and um, you know, we talked to a lot of guys. It wasn't anything out of the ordinary, but you know, he's ready to roll, and um, he's going to go try to play his best game on Sunday. Um, right. Great, great pass rusher, um, great defender. Um, I've been sending him around since college, since my freshman year of college. So I'm used to playing against him. He's a great, great defender, um, all around defense alone. When you watch this Cleveland defense on the tape, is it hard to find a lot of weaknesses? Uh, I mean, I believe every defense is going to have its, its strengths and weaknesses. Um, but for right now, those guys are flying around, um, all phases of the defense, flying around to the ball, playing great defense. Well, how much more difficult does it make it that they move miles around the different spots? I mean, I'm not the lineman, so I don't really think it'll be difficult for me. You know, I'm not the one blocking them. Uh, we just have to, you know, read the defense and dish the ball. Marvin, you watched the, the tape this past week. What was your biggest takeaway from it in terms of things you guys need to clean up going into the uh, Like I said, um, we, we had plenty of opportunities to win that game. Um, we were driving the ball down the field, and we have hit uh, mishaps. Uh, Got to just catch the ball, throw the ball, and do what we do best. You know, put points on the board. And going into Cleveland, do the same thing, but better. Lamar, it looked like a couple times Sunday there were times where you may have expected guys to do something different or vice versa. Are, is, are, are you, do you feel like you guys are still in that phase where you're still trying to get on the same page? Uh, absolutely, you know, it's September. You know, um, one of our guys just got there a week. You know, not, not even a month, he hasn't been around. Uh, and then we just trying to we just trying to figure each other out right now. You know, uh, we didn't really play preseason, so we just trying to figure it out. You know, we just had one great game against Cincinnati. Piggyback, you know, um, go to Colt, go play the Colts, and we just had a little mishap. And that happens, you know, every game not perfect, but we clean it up clean and I feel like it's how I'm looking for like always. When you get out on the practice field today, you got Ryan Stanley, Tyler Lindemann back out there, Marcus Williams. How does that, you know, you get kind of marquee players like that back out, at least on the practice field? How does that lift the spirits of the team and everything? Uh, I, uh, I raise them. Um, you know, uh, our, our guys back out there on the field. We're looking forward to it. You know, Makari and Sam did a great job. You know, when those guys was out, but hopefully they back up this week. And, just hit the ground running like we always do. Lamar, you and Deshaun Watson also go back to college, had some battles back oh, yeah, then. Yeah. What have you seen from him this year and his offense? To be honest, I haven't been watching those guys. Um, but like you said, you know, we've been going back and forth since 2016, that shootout in uh, Death Valley. Um, but yeah, um, I haven't been watching those guys this season, but they, they play pretty good, like what I've heard. Lamar, is there any, is there any like characteristics of the Browns defense that makes them particularly formidable? Uh, I say their, their corners and uh, well, the all-around defense, corner safety and uh, the defensive line. Like I said, those guys will be flying around on tape. Lamar, I know you guys are focused on your own team, but when a, when an NFL team scores seventy um, in a in a game, I mean, what what comes to mind? I mean, what do you think about? Um, does it think of, make you think about where offenses are going? Does it make you think of a bar that? You, you kind of want this offense to get to. What do you What do you think about that? Uh, to be honest, no. I believe our offense can do the same thing. Um, we just have to dial in, you know, stay locked in within the game and put points on the board. Because, like I said, I feel like we stopped ourselves against the coach turnovers, the mishaps. We wasn't putting points on the board, but I believe we could. Yeah, Lamar John had said uh, early last Sunday that you know the turnovers, fumbles, are if we're not winning football. We have to play winning football. Is there anything you have brought to in common with the fumbles that you've had so far this year? Well, it was in a pocket. Most of them have been in the pocket. You know, I had that one uh, 
get Texas, you know, and trying to make it down the list. But most of them been in the pocket. You know, I'm trying to throw the ball. You know, the ball is loose and I'm throwing it and it's been hit. You know, but got to do a better job at that. You know, it affects the game. It affects the game. pretty good. Um, like I said, we just got to keep guys healthy and uh, just keep rolling. I mean, Michael, you just said you got to keep guys healthy. I mean, you've you've been through a lot of different kinds of season. I mean, when you have all these injuries in the first few weeks of the season, do you have to fight? To sort of stay positive at all, or I mean, is, is you just, guys just used to dealing with that at this point? I think you get used to it. Uh, I think it kind of can be shocking for like younger guys, like rookies. Yeah. Um, but they said once you've been, you know, I would say probably two to three years in the league, you just kind of get used to it. But yeah, like I said people's roles change, and um, that's kind of where you see guys step up and or fall off. So um, you know, T. Rob has done an amazing job, especially on my D line, of just stepping up when he's needed. So. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of like a call to action. And um, like I said, the games don't change, but the people do. So it's kind of how you deal with it. Speaking of injuries, I mean, obviously they just lost Nick Chubb recently. Mm -hmm. But you know, how challenging is it going up against that Cleveland run game that we know has been really productive for a few years? Now? Yeah, I mean, Kareem Hunt is a, is a mainstay for them. He's been there, what, three or four years? So he's familiar. He played last week. Um, their offensive line is really, really good, one of the tops in the league. So. Um, it's a, it's a difficult game, but I think we had the men that's built for the job. Uh, me and myself, Travis, Herb, Brody, um, Beeks, obviously. So um, it's going to be on us to establish a line of scrimmage and kind of make them at least study their feet and go backside and go where the runs are planning to go. So um, like I said, I think we got the men for the job, along with Roquan and all those guys as well. But it's definitely been placed on us to set the tone for the game. and move forward from there. So did you see any difference in boxing <coughs> last week compared to the previous games? Uh, so was it? Yeah, he was more accurate. Um, I'm not the most, uh, I probably would say I'm probably the least guy to pay attention to the quarterback as far as like throws down the field. Um, but no, he was definitely more accurate and uh, more precise with the ball. They had some miscues. But, um, no, nah, he, he, I would say he's always been elusive. Um, he did make a lot of guys miss a lot of sacks, which we've um, we struggled with a little bit last week. So um, they just kind of emphasize that at practice, just making sure we break down our feet and try to, you know, get our bodies in front of them. But um, no, nah, he, he does a great job of making guys miss and looking for those second plays and uh, getting the ball downfield after the initial play breaks down. Michael, going up against the team that has the number one defense, does that kind of invigorate you and fellow defenders to try and outclass them, outperform them, more so than just traditionally playing against another defense? Um, so I would say we strive to be the number one defense. Uh, we aren't there at, at the moment, but um, <laughs> definitely. But this is like Cleveland Browns, Baltimore Ravens. It's always been a big hit, um, take a punch, throw a punch kind of game. So um, no, nah, we definitely are aware that they're number one. And um, like I said, they have an amazing front. Obviously, we know Z and all those guys, so play with Dalvin. So, um, no, nah, we definitely want to outplay them. But um, at the end of the day, the number one spot is still up for grabs until the season's over. So we, that's what we're striving for. Michael, you've been through these AFC North road games before. Is there anything about Cleveland that is different from going to Pittsburgh or Cincinnati? Is there anything you mentioned hard-hitting games? Does anything stick out about when you play there? Um, I would just say from the last year or so, we haven't had the best – run defense when we went there. Um, well, they ran well when they were here, but um, I wouldn't say so. Uh, I mean, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, um, they all kind of the same to me, uh, especially in the trenches. Like I said, we've been playing against Nick Chubb there and you know how great he is. So I think it's just really, like I said, just take a punch, throw a punch. It's been like way with Pittsburgh, especially when they had like Le'Veon Bell and all those guys and Pouncey guys. So um, I would relate to that, just another hard hitting Fun game to play in if you're in the trenches. Does Mike. the defense take anything extra about going into an enemy territory and maybe being motivated by everyone being against you? Is there anything that, that, that fuels you about that? Um, I say it's satisfying when you take the life out of that crowd and uh, it goes silent. Um, I've been a part of some really good defenses here, and we've done that on a few occasions. <clears> so um, that's what you strive for. And uh, if you can get to a point, probably third or fourth quarter, where they don't have any momentum and that crowd is really silent, that uh, that really, really feels really good. Michael, how exciting is it to get Marcus Williams back on the practice field? Just, you know, a few weeks ago, didn't know if you guys were even going to have him the rest of the year. Yeah, no, man, I mean, he's one of our leaders. So um, 
anytime he can just be around, be out here, no matter the capacity, it always makes you feel good. Anytime you get any of your guys back, uh, we'll get Marlon back at some point. And those kind of those guys who are working to get healthy, Tyus as well. So anytime you can get a guy like Marcus back who changes the game in uh, in the blink of an eye, that's always good to just have the energy back and have those uh, those guys who you can really really rely on back. So um, no, it's awesome. Playing on much pride, you guys think stopping the run. Uh, Moss had a few runs last week. What mm-hmm. you, what you see, and I guess. How much more determined I think you guys are down the down this week? Um, we had a misalignment on the first play of the game, and uh, we had some misfits. So it's really hard to disseminate to the public how much one person being out of place or lining up wrong really makes a difference. But I can't stress to y'all enough, like, that's super, super important. Um, so when I say, like, oh, we didn't line right, that's, like, a big, big deal. And you can really, really see if you watch film how that affects the defense. So um, obviously that's on us, getting, up, getting the calls and lining up right and then you know executing the calls when we do have those missteps. But like I, I told, uh, me and Brody were talking about it earlier, just every play somebody may make a misstep or may miss an assignment, but it's about those other 10 guys who can cover that up and then keep going. So. Uh, head coach, and I think that's something that he wants to do, um, run the ball. So that's our main priority, stopping the run. And then I think they're gonna try to uh, get the ball to um, number two, Cooper and then put eight in some uh, a lot of situations as well. And then obviously our tight ends come alive. So I don't think it'll be anything different, uh, minus like Chubb, but I still think they're gonna try to um, run the ball. When you prepare for a guy like Watson, who maybe struggled a little bit when he first took over the job in Cleveland, do you still go in assuming the guy you saw back in 2019 and 2020, that he's fully capable of being that guy? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anything a man done once, I'm sure they can. Uh, the likelihood they can do it again is uh, very possible. So, got a lot of respect for the guy uh, playing the position, uh, one of the toughest position uh, in the league to play, in my opinion. So, I think we're just gonna we're gonna have to just come out and do what we have to do, um, and whatever it takes to get the job done. And if we do that, I feel like we'll be in good standings. Obviously, you're going up against their offense. But is, is there any part of you, and you're going up against a team that has really good defense, you know, they're ranked number one right now, that it's kind of a, a sense of pride there in, in, uh, in the face of the team that you guys both have really good defenses? Uh, I think what this is week four. Uh, you're not defined off being the best defense in the league through week four, period. Uh, I think, yeah, it's a 17 game season, so. It's what you're gonna do uh, late in the season, but uh, hats off to those guys. I haven't watched them, so not really sure. I know they got some good players over there uh, and whatnot, but I haven't really watched them, so I really don't care too much if I'm being perfectly honest. Just more focused on our defense and uh, what we're gonna do to uh, make sure we come out victorious in this game. Is that more broadly true for you that there's really not a lot of value to you in paying attention to what other defenses are are doing? Uh, I'm trying to see like what I can actually gain uh, from watching them. Like, I don't think personally I can gain anything from watching their defense. And uh, from what I hear, just based off in uh, team meeting, like they play a completely different style yeah. uh, of defense, you know. But hats off to those guys for uh, what they've done thus far in this season. Uh, I look forward to Sunday, and I think you know we do what we have to do and play our style offensively and defensively. Then we'll we'll come out victorious. Bro, you've been with the Ravens long enough now to have ventured into each of these AFC North cities. What, how would you describe Cleveland in particular or the division in general when you go in there as the enemy, the intensity and whatnot? Yeah, you go in there as the, as the enemy to go take over, and that's our plan uh, to actually go take over. I think they call it the dog pound. I consider myself a dog, so I'm right at home in that place. So I'm excited to get back in there. And I know they're a physical football team, but so are we. And at the end of the day, it's going to be the most physical football team that come out of there, um, that comes out of there. And whoever is the most physical football team in that game, that's going to come out uh, victorious. And uh, your question about the division, yeah, I think, in my opinion, I think it's the best division in football, like without a doubt, if you look at it from top to bottom. Roquan, along those lines, how much do you embrace this four-week stretch where you have three road games in the division? It's a challenge, but also knowing if you fare the way, way you guys want to, you know, what that could mean for you guys in the big picture of division and, you know, everything down the road. Honestly, I love it. You know, I love a challenge, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I love looking, facing, looking something square in the face and saying, bring it on, bring it on, whatever it is, you know, chin up, chest out. You know, I, I live by that sunsets, no regrets. So I'm looking forward to it and I can't wait. We're going back for, to uh, KP uh, and the way he even came in today and the way he uh, been approaching things uh, since I first met him and, uh, 
just his leadership as well as just like how smart the guy is, like how quickly he pick up on things like already out here today, you know, just calling out things. So when a guy come in like that, you know, a well-seasoned veteran, uh, been in a lot of different schemes, so he know exactly uh, what, what we expect of him, and I'm just excited to uh, welcome him uh, to the team, and I think he's going to be a great addition for us. How great is he? Uh, just be focused, you know, taking it week by week, learning from our mistakes of last week and uh, growing as a team, and just giving all effort. We know what that means. Yeah, I mean, we fly around, obviously. Good secondary, good safeties, um, those, those linebacker group, of, um, the shifty. So we're going to have to bring it. We're going to have to be prepared. And uh, just the vibe and the focus of this week is be focused and ready to go. So excited about the guys and our team for this week. Physical, man. You don't see a team like this very often. So um, for us, you know, as, as a group, we're going to have to be ready to go, um, have our mindset uh, right, and we wish we could. What offensive view you guys have a great game against the Bengals? It's a tough one. What's it like in that group as a coach? I say, all right, we know what we're capable of doing. You know, it's just about the Just calming down, you know, not listening to, to too much of the outside noise and, and know, knowing who we are and, and that we have to grow. We have to grow from week to week. And the teams that are able to do that, um, you know, it's a long season. So if we can continue to, to go to where we need to be. Obviously, last game we were close. Um, wasn't where we needed to be to win the game. But, um, Along those lines, Mark, can you describe what you guys are endeavoring with the new coordinator as a work in progress? In other words, you don't know totally what it is yet, but it's still building. Is that, is that fair to say? I think it's fair. You know, I think I think as an offense, uh, we know what we can be and, and should be, and so um, that's the exciting part. You know, we haven't you know reached our full potential yet. So we're still working on that. Um, it's going to be a dangerous group. And, uh, we never lose sight of that. Um, you know, you always got to bring it. He's such a special athlete and specimen, and uh, he's so good at what he does. So uh, this is one of those weeks where uh, you got to be ready to go, or, or guys like him and, and other guys on that on that defense are going to make it back. Honestly. Um, being two and one, uh, being able to stack another win against this uh, divisional team would, would be huge for us. Mark, when you when you watch that last game on tape, what's your sense of why there were as many maybe downfield opportunities as you guys feel like? Uh, it just happens sort of that way. You know, I think that you know, there's some, um, you know, I think all 11 guys or everybody that was on the field, touched the field, there's things that we could have done differently. And so um, it's taking advantage of those opportunities. Uh, that's all I was thinking about. I ain't talking about some of nothing that happened there with no teammates or no coaching staff or nothing. Uh, it was locker room talk that got out, obviously. Uh, I never did this with nobody over there, uh, sat in front of them and talked. So, um, I'm on to a new year right now. I don't care about what happened last year. So, so, yeah, so there, I'm playing for the Baltimore Ravens now. Sorry. So, because uh, yeah, people would say, oh, how it ended. You don't, no, no, no bad blood then? Not for me. I don't think so. Uh, like I say, I got a lot of respect. If I had any uh, bad blood, I don't think I would have signed to go back there for two years in a row for everybody that think it was so bad. But I would never sign to go back. Uh, I'm just in the category, anybody want to win. That wasn't a good year for us in Latin year. And we wasn't winning a lot of games. And a lot of some people pointed fingers. There could have been a lot of fingers pointed that year. And uh, you know, I ended up on the wrong side of the fence, I guess. But uh, I'm looking forward to this year. Like I said, I'm here now. I don't play for them. It's no reason to be talking about what happened there last year, but that's behind me. Uh, I'm talking about this year. I'm just focused on winning games here and being the best standing on kind I can be for the Baltimore Ravens. You mentioned when you, 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 you first know. came here, you had this game circled on your on your calendar. I think uh, I is there a little the whole, bit? I circled a whole. All of them. Holy cow. All 17. Is there a little bit of chip, a, a chip on, on the shoulder going into this? Just for, you know, division rival, given uh, the way it ended. Of course. Given, of course, given all the attention. It's a division game, man. Yeah. It's a division game. It come like twice. And uh, to go to the playoffs and to win in the division, you got to go through this team because they're in there. So, and they next up. Uh, come off a loss what we just had. We need to play well this week. We need to play our style of football and come out there and play compliment. And we can go out there, move the ball and play defense, get stopped, and get the ball back there. And we'll see how I look at the end. All right, thank you very much. We appreciate it.